All right. So what I'd like to do, guys, is show you how to graph this function. It says y minus cosine of x. All right. Now, like I said, in your in your um, on your homework, it has y plus cosine of x. But like I said, I need a problem that's going to bring in reflection, and I don't have time to do two different problems. So I'm just going to include any reflection in this problem. All right. So you'll still be able to see exactly what your homework question is by me showing you, uh, by me doing it first. So first of all, guys, we just go through our steps. Find the amplitude first. The amplitude, remember, is your absolute value of A, the number that is in front of your function. Make sure it's the number that's multiplied. So some of you might say, oh, well, one's in front. Yes, but one is not being multiplied by cosine, right? You actually have a negative one being multiplied by cosine. So my amplitude is going to be a negative absolute value of a negative 1, which is obviously 1. Yes, Rhoda? Is 1 the D? The 1 is going to be my D. Yes, very good. What I did was I just rewrote the function where my D is actually in front. All right, so very good. Um, your period is, remember, how long it takes. Oh, before I go on a period. Remember, amplitude is just going to be the distance of your graph from the x-axis, how far it goes up and how far it goes down. Your period is the length it takes for your graph to complete one cycle. So the period is 2 pi divided by b, where b is your number in front of x. Here, you can see there's no uh, other number, so it has to be 1, right? So I have 2 pi over 1, which equals 2 pi. Cool? So now, those are the two basic ones. Once you guys get those done, it's like, okay, I have at least a starting point where I can set up a graph. Because at least with the graph, you guys know my period is not going to go greater than 1 or less than 1. Right? And then I know that my period is going to go down to 2 pi. Now, we do need to figure out what our four important points are. Now, on a cosine graph, I told you guys to write these the pair of functions down, right? The cosine graph, the first cycle of a cosine graph is going to look like that. Source of one. So in this case, it would be. Okay, where at point. this point is 2 pi. So there's still four important points. I have a point, point there, here, here, and here. Now, again, these are still evenly spaced between each other. So I'm going to take 2 pi and divide by 4. And what I get is pi over 2. So if I break this up into four equal parts, the first part is pi over 2. Pi. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is uh, 2 uh, over 2 over pi, or 2 pi over 2, oh, which is pi. pi. Then here it becomes 3 pi over 2. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Right? This is actually right in your paragraph. All right. Um, so now we have all these four points. The next thing we need to understand, guys, is your graph is going to look like your paragraph, right? Except we have a reflection. So I am going to draw the reflection first so you guys can see it or see exactly uh, what it would look like. But remember, we have the reflection, so we're going to have to reflect it over the x-axis. So those are my four important points. I know that this is going to be my um, intercept, this is going to be my minimum, my other intercept, and the end of my function. Now it does say, if we look at this, it says 1 minus. So pretty much what that means is that's a positive 1. That 1 represents your D. It doesn't represent the C because it's not inside the parentheses inside your function. Since it's outside of my function, it represents the D. So instead of my graph crossing at 1, my graph is now going to cross at 2, right? Now, this is without the reflection. This is actually what your homework should have looked like. So you're going to cross at 2. And um, you're going to cross at 2, and then your minimum now is going to go down to 0. So now this is like your new x-axis, OK? Because your amplitude is still up 1, down 1. So what your homework should look like would be something like this. Okay, so for those of you that were checking your homework, that's what your homework should look like. All right. However, what happened in this problem? 
I said I want you to reflect it. So instead of your graph being down here, I wanted the graph to be here, right? So that's a reflection. Then it's telling me to shift my reflection up one. Okay? So what this problem actually is having us do, so I'm just going to erase this. I just wanted you guys to see what it looked like. But actually, well, you know what? Just so you guys can see, if you guys take this graph and reflect it over, reflect the graph over the x-axis, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to have this graph, but a reflection of the graph over here. And the shift. Okay? And the shift. So, um, originally, our graph was here, and it was down to there. Right, so we reflected it down. Then we shifted it up one unit. Yes. Is it, isn't it that like you reflect it with the movement already up? Or wouldn't it be on the negative one? Well, there's a couple different ways you can look at it. Um, if you take your reflection, if you have your reflection here, okay, um, all we're doing is we're taking our reflection. So here would be like the reflection, right? Correct? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that reflection and then shift that up. Okay? We're not, it's not adding an up one, which probably I probably said that wrong because you guys are probably thinking taking that whole thing and then shifting over. Because you're not going to shift it up first and then reflect it. you got to reflect it first and then you'll be adding it up. Okay? So I probably, yeah, probably the way I explained that you guys, you're probably not going to look right because you guys have this. So now you're going to have your reflection. So now the graph's going to be coming up from this way, but we're going to move it actually up one. So instead of it um, crossing like this, it's actually going to cross over here. So now my graph is going to move from up here. That's still actually going to be my x-axis. And let's see, that's going to cross my point. That'll be my one. So you'd have. It's all the time. So it crosses, that's your important point, that's your maximum, and that's your other intercept. So the main important thing, hold up, the main important thing when you're doing this is to make sure that you reflect it first. Make sure you get your reflection first, and then, see so here my reflection, if you add it up from here, then you reflect it first and then shift it up. Okay. Yes. So if, when I first graph was on two, why didn't when we reflected it came from one? Because what happened was that was after we did all of our. That would be like this. It, it's a different. It's a different type of function. But what that would have been is if that was after you completed your shifting upwards. Okay. I probably shouldn't have explained it exactly said it the way I did because what you need to do is you need to make sure you reflect it first. Then you can do your vertical translation. What I, to show you what your homework problem was. I I didn't do a reflect. All I did was I shifted it up. So if you're to add a reflection onto it after that, it's going to be a different function than what actually we're graphing right now. If you can just remember, whenever you have a reflection, do that reflection first and then do your translation, whatever you need to. Okay. Yes. Isn't it that sine graph? Because cosine is supposed to go down, right? Right. But remember, I took my graph. Right? And then I reflected it. So it looks like this, right? Then I took this graph and I shifted it up one. So yes, it looks like a sine graph now. See what I did? I reflected it, I flipped it, and then I moved it up. So basically reflecting the cosine, you will get you will end up with a sine, right? Yeah, but remember the sine graph though actually looks like this though. It goes up and down. But they're very similar, yes. But yes, very similar. Uh, actually Tamara first. Um, so is that dotted straight? This is kind of like me just helping me out. Um, this is like kind of represents the x-axis again. Just so I can see like where, you know, these two numbers, I said these were important parts. You're like, well, why are they so important? Well, these were would be where they cross the x-intercept. So they're just it's just helpful for me to see like that would be my, th these two points are where they would cross the x-intercept. They obviously don't cross the intercept because I, I just made a little line in there to, to know where those points are. But you don't need it. Correct. And then the one before the negative is when you shift it up one. Yes. Oh, yeah.
And just remember this graph keeps on going, inferring to the left, to the right. Yes, Kelly? Oh, I figured it out. Okay. So if you had just like a four in front of the cosine, that would be four. You mean a four there or a four there? Well, like if you just have one number in front of it. Like a four there? Yeah. That's going to increase how high it goes up. So instead of it going up to, um, Instead of it um, going up one, it'd go up to four. So it'd be much taller than the other. And then this one isn't the, um, the minute it's supposed to only go up to one because that's the amplitude. Yes, but what happened um, What happened was it shifted up one. It only goes up one. You're right. It only goes up to one, right? It only goes up to one, but then I went up another unit. I shifted the whole graph up one, so it went up to two. That's why.